as I'll say. Welcome everyone to the Stacy's Mom podcast. I'm Stacy, and this is my mom. Hi, Dee. And today we have um, a very special. So exciting. I know. I love her. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You'll probably know her from Instagram and that's where we know her from. So yeah. um, without further ado, we'll start our little heading and we will introduce you. Yay. Yay. Welcome. I'm so glad we were Hi. able to do this. Yeah. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. We've been going back and forth and trying to find a date. So I'm so yep. happy that this this worked out with all of our schedules. So yes. Yes. Well, we pretty much have the same schedule, mm -hmm. Stacey and I. Pretty but much. that yeah, it's been great. I first of all, I wanted to say, like, how do I go about saying this? But you have taken some pretty um painful subjects and have been able to put kind of a humorous spin on things, but still make you stop and go, hmm, yes, I've lived through that too. And it wasn't fun, but they still stop and make you think and still are able to make you kind of sometimes laugh and sometimes still kind of get you in the gut. So thank you for what you do. Oh my goodness. You you're welcome. Um, I learned that there is a, with religious trauma, with, with escaping fundamentalist religions, um, I speak from the fundamentalist evangelical movement, Same. but there's, there's so many layers and. Uh-oh. Oh no, you cut out. We froze you. <gasps> Hopefully you come back. Oh no. Where's Elsa? <laughs> She's frozen. Okay. She okay, froze. we'll see what happens. We'll see how this goes because she was getting into something really yeah. good right there. That's the devil. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we would have said before. Um, I'll just remove her from the screen. And see what happens. We'll see what happens when she comes back. Let's yeah, see. Yeah, she's um she does take a lot of really awful things mm -hmm. um and is able oh, to I think she might be oh, back she's hold back. on okay yeah are you okay. back are you back okay yeah. okay yeah, yeah. That's the layers and yes that's sneaky yeah. sneaky devil he came in yeah. there right? oh I know I know it's <laughs> no, the enemy. actually actually it would have been God that stopped you at that one yeah. probably <laughs> um <laughs> yeah I um there's so many layers of trauma and I know that I mean Unfortunately, the lingo, the vernacular that so many of us still have is evangelical in nature, but I'm going to say it this way, that there's yeah. still so much darkness that's associated around it. And so I try to pull some humor into those spaces so that we can say, oh, okay, wait, like that's still a place that I need to think about, that I need uh -huh. to um, maybe talk to somebody about or just process on my own. But thank goodness we can all laugh about certain things, right? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a level, there's a layer of truth, but also if we can't laugh at some of this stuff, I, what are we doing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. It, oh yeah. Like every, <laughs> what we went through. Yeah. Weird, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what flavor of evangelical, like what um, denomination you came from, but I was non-denominational. So yeah. we just took the worst of every single doctrine and yes. put it into one space and called it yeah. a non-denominational church. So we and had- we were proud of that, weren't we? We were so proud, right? Because we weren't legalistic, but in the yeah. <laughs> but in reality, we, we took so the legalistic. most legalistic mm -hmm. from um, it, you know, we watched these documentaries and like independent fundamentalist Baptists, so, um, uh, IBLP, yeah. yeah. And we look at like I looked at that and I realized, oh my gosh, I grew up with aspects yes. of Bill Gothard and IBLP. Yes. I grew up with aspects of independent fundamentalist Baptists. I mm -hmm. grew, you know, there's just so many different things. And that yeah. is a non-denominational church. Like, oh, totally. it'll mess you up every single way possible. Yeah. yeah. So no, I, I, when I watched the happy, shiny people, I was like, hey, wait a second. 
we were taught that. Hey, we we learned that that umbrella um, mm, model. Mm-hmm. That was a huge thing that was part yeah. of our church. If you're not familiar with the umbrella model, it's the God. Was it God, the church, the husband, family, or, or yeah. something? Yeah, yeah. That... God, pastor, husband, oh, God, yeah. wife, kids. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, and even though, yeah, we I didn't necessarily grow up going to something like that. Um, there were so many elements of that teaching that's creeped into pretty much every church I ever attended, which yeah. was technically non-denominational. So yeah. it's so I don't know what it was like with you. We had the umbrella of protection or the umbrella of authority. So there was those different words, but we also called it the covering. Yes. Mm-hmm. So did we. Yeah. And that's, I feel like that's very specific to non-denominational churches. I don't yeah. have this, the data on that. Um, I haven't like done a survey or anything, but I have noticed that for the people um, that have, that have come out of non-denominational churches, it, it was, it was covering like you, if you do this, you are outside of your father's covering. You are that's outside right. of yeah. husband's covering. You are outside of the church's covering. And then if, you're open to the enemy. Exactly. Like, and it'll be in little things like, sure, God, you might still have God's blessing on you, but if you don't tithe your 10%, you're outside of the protect, the covering. Yeah. It's covering. And, um, I, I still don't know what that model was supposed to be. Right. Like what was the secret formula? Because I can tell you we followed everything Yeah, and we still, left church. When we were done with church, when we escaped, I like to say that, um, I like to say the word escape because anybody that has left Mm -hmm. the fundamentalist evangelical movement, you lose everything and everybody. Like you just, you you start from scratch. And so when we escaped, um, we had like just thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of debt because we tithed before we did anything else. And that full 10%. And if we didn't, the guilt that would be hovering Mm, over us. Yeah. Yeah. Robbing God. I remember when a, when a pastor, he was, um, he was just like him and his wife were very Bethel, very Bethel. Okay. Um, I don't know how else I can say that. Um, you know, just like, um, like gold shimmer, holy gold falling, Uh that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and he just said, you know, God wants you to take care of your family first. So just don't tithe for a season. And when I talked to at this, this was before I was at a mega church. When I talked to at the time, she was my best friend and she was horrified. She was just like, okay, so you have decided not to tithe, but you're going and getting your hair done. Uh How does that honor God? Oh my God. Oh my God. And just the, like, I found out that we're supposed to, like, as Christians, as evangelicals, like, we're supposed to be excited about the revelations that God does in our life. Mm-hmm. But if the people around us didn't agree with those revelations, then we were shunned. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's it true. was up to people's interpretations. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Everyone could have a different interpretation. It could get so confusing and so mm-hmm. inside your head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I definitely anyway. knew people who were like that, uh-huh. who would have said this, a very similar thing to me. Yeah. About. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, you kind of felt like you had to almost run things by people or to get the, um, two or three agreed, mm-hmm. you had to have that two or three in agreement oh, with geez. you to feel like yep. it was really the spirit talking. Yeah. Okay. So when did you guys deconstruct? What happened? How, did you oh, do it geez. together, you and your husband? Or yeah. what was the first little thread? That's a very interesting situation right there because my husband grew up in a non-churched home. Um, oh, that's like a lot yours. like my husband. Yeah. So he did not come to the Lord um, until he was boys. like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just, it's so Gosh, for, it, it is. It's just like there's so much legalism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's so so much pomp and circumstance. It's such yeah. regents, you know, like yeah. I don't yeah. know. Um, he grew up in an in a unchurched, non-church home. And like they had the Ten Commandments on the wall, but 
it was, you know, they just, they taught their kids good morals. It's, I mean, obviously in every situation, it's not without its fault, but um, they were taught great morals. Like my, my mother-in-law would wait at a door. She, so my husband has, um, it's him and his brother and she would wait at a door if they weren't going, like if they didn't open it for her, if they went ahead of her, she would just stand there. And so my husband always opens doors for people, not just, you know, not just women, it's just everybody. Um, um, he opens my car door. Like there's just, he was taught how to be a gentleman. Um, his mom is, his mom is a strong, independent woman. Um, so he was raised with just this idea that of course, women work if they want to. Of course, you know, women can do these things. The women aren't fragile and right. women have friends and they have hobbies and they have interests and they pursue things that they want. Um, and his dad is, um, his dad is a blue collar worker while well, he retired, but he was a truck driver. Um, and he grew up playing baseball, you know, baseball was, was their family's thing. Okay. Um, and then there's, and then, he met, um, he actually met a girl. She brought him to youth group and then he accepted Christ. But again, in his perspective, this wasn't a bad thing because he grew up with the 10 commandments Mm -hmm. and just this concept that there's God and okay, there, it wasn't, I think the word is like scrupulosity or scrupulosity. Scrupulosity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where you're just, it's all consuming. Right. It's, Mm -hmm. um, it's like OCD, but religious. Yeah. yeah. Right. I had that. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think, I think we all definitely had it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, so he meets this girl, he dates her. I mean, we're talking like he's 18, 17 or 18. And then there's me. And I was born with, you know, I was born into the fundamentalist evangelical movement where, um, we were probably about 70, 75% James Dobson ran the home, right? Yeah. Like when, when I tell people who, you know, like, oh, did you grow up with your parents? Yes. I grew up with my parents and James Dobson. Like yeah. <laughs> James Dobson told my parents how to discipline and mm-hmm. they implemented that. My parents mm-hmm. didn't have their own ideas of discipline. They weren't mm-hmm. unique. They weren't original. They just did what James Dobson told them to. Right. Yep. And um, I then... So we were going to this church. Um, my child, the best friend, her and why I bring her into the story. She's brilliant. She's wonderful. Um, her and I, our parents were um, were best friends. And she and I, so she was born just before me. So when I was born, we were put in the playpen together. And oh, wow. we, that's how like we've, we still to this day talk, um, talk frequently our lives, even though we haven't seen each other for gosh, probably, you know, a decade and a half, if not longer than that, like our lives have completely mirrored each other, which is just crazy in, in many, in many ways. Um, I mean, yeah, she deconstructed a long time ago, so that's a little different, but, um, so our church had a split, her family took IBLP, my, my family took Dobson, but because they were still best friends, we were still influenced by that. So she was homeschooled. I was public schooled. The kind of the concept with that was that I was supposed to be sort of like a missionary in okay. public school, which made me okay. really popular. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Um, yeah, <laughs> best friends with everybody. They all wanted to be my friend. It was great. Um, <laughs> so I always had these questions. I remember my mom saying, God made the heavens and the earth. And God made the universe. And then I'd say, well, like how long ago? Well, mm-hmm. he's been, a, God's been there forever. He's been there forever. Okay. But who created God? Mm-hmm. Well, God just appeared. No, 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 no. <laughs> who created God? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, God just appeared. You just need to settle with the fact that there are things that we don't know. And then her, mm-hmm. her canned answer was always, baby, if you are sweetie, if you, um, if you don't understand something, that's a question that you can ask God when you get to heaven. That's mm-hmm. that was a very standard answer. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. When you get to heaven, you can ask God. Okay. And he'll answer it. Yeah. Yeah, and he'll answer it, and you he'll show you the beginning of time. Okay. Well, I bet he'll show me who created him then. 
Yeah. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> there's got to be something. Because yeah. my yeah. my inquisitiveness couldn't stop asking questions. Right. Yeah. And I learned that good girls don't ask questions. Mm. Um, I learned that from such a young age because the response that I would see on people's faces yeah. and it would let my, you, I could just tell like, oh, that disappointed my parents, mm -hmm. that disappointed my mom, unless it was asking questions to people that weren't believers. Oh, and then right. you can ask as many questions as you want. Like yeah. then you're being a really good girl because you're leading yeah. people, you're showing them how wrong they are and you're leading people to Christ. So, um, <laughs> It was like the, the, the back and forth rules were so difficult. Um, but I, I would say there were just little moments, um, throughout my teenage years that caused me to have pause. Like, mm -hmm. I don't understand this, but again, God's ways are not our ways. I'm not meant to understand everything. Yeah. Lean not on your own understanding. Own understanding. Have yep. faith of a, as a little child. Yep. Which means exactly. be dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Which means don't ask questions. Yeah. Um, and, um, I met my husband two weeks out of high school oh, and wow. my dad said, that's the man that God has chosen for you. Uh, we've heard that. And how did you no. feel about no. that? Were you, um, it, you know, it's interesting. Cause I, I met him, um, line dancing at oh. a underage club. Like we didn't meet at church. Okay. Um, we went line dancing and I don't, we went on our first date and just, he came home and my dad was like, my dad said, so I didn't find this out until, um, about a month and a half later, but he met my husband and he went upstairs and told my mom, like, I just met our future son-in-law. Like, I know it's him. And so there was a lot of encouraging to go mm -hmm. that direction, um, and then a month and a half later, my dad said, yeah, God told me that that's the person that you're going to marry. And I was thrusted into this. Um, first off, I, w I was told, I, you know, I'm a woman. I'm not going to go to, I'm not going to go to college. Um, mm -hmm. and because I had the duality of public school and living in this religion, um, I, I felt angry about that. Mm. Um, and I thought, okay, well, I'll just have to figure out a way to put myself through college. But then there was that nudge consistently from my family saying that this Get is married. the person you're going to marry. So I sort of just like put that on the back burner and didn't really yeah. care about it anymore. I was like, okay, well, I guess this is the direction that God wants me to go, which is honoring to him. And <clears throat> um, the confirmation was really just that that was the direction that they wanted young women to take was marriage right. and babies. That's so right. I was like, oh, okay, well, I am, I guess I'm just lucky because I get to do this now. And that's an answer to my prayers because, um, you know, I remember being 16, 17 and just being so devastated because I didn't know who I was going to marry. <laughs> I remember I'm that like, too. Geez, 16 or 17, like – I, I can't imagine, oh my God. Um, I know. but I have the journal entries. So me too. Yeah. I got married it's, at 17. Definitely. Yeah. And now <laughs> it's interesting. Cause like now I'm on a state coalition to help end child marriage in our state. Oh, and I'm one of the people that, um, I'm one of their survivors. Cause I talk about forced marriage and how it mm -hmm. doesn't look like, like for some people, it does look like the, like there's a, a survivor on our team that, was married off at 12. Oh. And there's another survivor that was married off at 15. But then there's people like me that, you know, I got married when I was 20, but I didn't realize my husband, I did not realize it was a forced marriage situation until we escaped the church. And then we're like, right. oh my gosh. Yeah. Now, thank goodness. Again, I married somebody that grew up non-church. So yeah. like, he's a fantastic human being. And, Good. um, obviously like our relationship isn't without its faults because we're humans, but yes, I digress anyway. So we get married, we have kids. And I think that's really where the thread started being pulled as I realized, okay, well, my parents have abandoned me my, um, cause they wanted to go and do their, that's a whole other strange story. Um, but 
you know, when God tells you to go do something, you go do it, even if it's super ridiculous and makes absolutely no sense. And will what did they do? Yeah. So when I was 18, I graduated high school. <laughs> this is great. Oh boy. I graduated high school and my, so, um, my, my aunt, um, her, her husband, so she lived in the Sierra Nevada foothills in California, mm -hmm. 20 acres in the middle of nowhere, but her husband, so my uncle had passed away of cancer yeah. and all of a sudden my mom was like, I think that God wants us to go down and live there, like sell everything, go down and live there and build houses for missionaries Oh, okay. um, when they're on vacation. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, so they <laughs> sold the house and they, they didn't bring me like, that's just it is I had met this man, oh, um, man, this boy, saying. I met this boy right? Like he's, he's like seven months older than me. We're Gosh. 18 and I'm not going down with them. This was super convenient. Uh-huh. <gasps> oh my goodness. So now I'm being pressured. Well, but we've got friction from his side because they grew up unchurched, right? Yeah. They grew up thinking this is not normal. This isn't yeah. normal, but you know what it is? It's the perfect situation to say, that's religious persecution. They're persecuting oh, you oh because you're choosing to follow Jesus. And um, yeah, and that's a confirmation wow. that you're doing the right thing, that you're in God's oh, plan. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 So we get. That's a perfect, that's the mm -hmm. exact line from the Christian yeah. playbook. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. There. So my parents abandoned me at 18 and, um, I was left by myself. I didn't have, um, I mean, I kind of had family in the area, but they weren't, um, you know, like aunts, uncles and stuff, but we weren't close. Um, and I've been on my own since 18. Wow. So I, anyway, we got married. We didn't really have any help. Um, and our church situation, I just saw how ugly people treat people. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think it was just a, there was just a multitude of experiences. Like I worked at a pro-life yeah. clinic and I saw how awful they were to women that were interested in getting abortions and how judgmental. And I, I was like, I, I can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not something that I, that I want to do. And, um, I mean, I worked there for like four months maybe. And when I left, I was a hundred percent pro-choice and oh, then wow. I had to keep that a secret. Um, yes. and then, um, the election 2008 election and I voted for Obama and I lost friends because I voted for Obama. Um, and you know, I mean, yeah. I become pro-choice and I become a Democrat. Um, so there's just little things, right. That I that's can't not little, those no, are, yeah, little those are huge world. things. Yeah, um, exactly. those will make or break your social life. And, yeah. um, I challenged people consistently. Like I would go up and and say, "Hey, I noticed that you know you're not being a nice person. Like you you work in childcare at our church, but you're gossiping about the kids." Yeah. And so I would call people out on that and um, just lose friend group after friend group after friend group and be ostracized and. I just thought like we would bounce around from church to church, hoping that we would find our group, find mm -hmm. our, you know, I hate this that term, but like familiar. find the tribe. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. eventually, eventually it just, um, I, we had had enough. I was in the mega church. I'd been a worship leader since I was 14 years old, um, throughout different churches. Mm -hmm. And, um, I had, I came to a place at the mega church where, Gosh, we were, we were having dinner with the pastor and his wife. I mean, we couldn't have been more, we couldn't have been closer. Mm -hmm. And yet I felt so, I felt like an alien yeah, in this church. I get that. Yeah. And I watched some of the worst violations just, just in general, like, Hey, we're, we want to send you and your family on a, on a vacation paid for by the church. Okay. But that, 
that's against federal law. Like those are against, that's against wow. taxes. Like you can't yeah. do that. Oh um, and the pandemic hit um, and, you know, I'm in Washington. So it was mm-hmm. the first to, we were the first to really get that, um, the shutdowns. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. We were, gosh, March, my birthday's on March 4th. And by that weekend, we were totally shut down. Yeah. Um, and we haven't gone back to church. Like it'll be not this weekend. I think the next weekend is the, um, I like our four, yeah, our four year anniversary of like never being in church, but wow. I didn't realize that I had already done the bulk of my deconstruction and I didn't know it until my husband and I were talking about going back and, you know, we were vaccinated and it's like, Hey, when are we going back? And I was like, I, I'm, I don't want to go because yeah. I actually like myself and I never knew what that felt like because oh, right? wow. the joy of the Lord was something you only felt when you hated yourself. Mm-hmm. You could only feel the joy of the Lord when your life was horrible. Right. Ugh. And so the joy, like in the evangelical movement, joy isn't joy. Joy is pain. Joy is depression. That's yeah. what joy means. Yeah. And I didn't realize I went through my whole life depressed and mm-hmm. not yeah. being able to feel things. I was numb 100%. because I yeah. chased after reasons to feel joy. Yeah. Because if I wasn't feeling horrible, Sounds then like I felt you. like mm-hmm. there's something wrong with me. Like how many times did we hear you can't be, um, uh, I you w- can't, what I, I was going to say crucify the flesh or yeah. yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. You can't right? be proud of yourself or anything. No. You can't. And if you become content, that means oh, yeah. contentment is a sin. If yeah. you become mm-hmm. content, know that God is about to shake things up in your world oh, because totally. he never yeah. wants you complacent or content. Yeah. Don't you can never be comfortable. And what that teaches us at such a young age is foreboding joy. Like you cannot, yes. I, I am not allowed to have joy. I'm not allowed to have happiness. Cause as soon as I feel that God will know, and he's going to take away whatever yes. it is I feel happy about. Yeah. Actually that reminds me of, um, we used to really enjoy going to Disneyland mm-hmm. and I remember feeling if really bad because I thought if I enjoy this too much and I get so excited because I loved going and I would get so excited for every single trip. I was afraid that maybe one day God would say, okay, you can't go to Disneyland anymore. We did feel that. We We, did. We did feel that. We we started actually, and it was a a Christian friend who loved Disneyland as much as we did, but she got jealous that we were going so often. So she started pointing out all the demonic things at Disney. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were starting to feel really like condemned, like maybe we should stop going to Disney because yeah. there's a lot of like underlying tones of, of demonic things. And did things you know that Walt belonged to this Freemason secret, club? Yeah. And, oh, and she's the one who loved Disney. Yeah. But you're right. <laughs> it, we, we were totally afraid of if you, if you show too much excitement for something that wasn't of God, he would take that away. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It. So, um, that's really what it came down to. And then when I, when, when we stopped going, um, my life became significantly better. Um, I'm not constantly worried (laughs) that (laughs) if there's a blessing, there's going to be a point where God (laughs) takes away that situation. Or like if we, like if my husband gets a raise or if something goes well for me, it's like, okay, well, there's going to be some sort like our car is going to break down, you know, yeah. like just gosh, the, yeah. everything for, for yeah, a group you can never of individuals, happy and in- totally for yeah. a group of individuals that claim you are not allowed to give attention to the enemy Everything is about, is about the is about Satan is about the enemy. It's yeah. so exhausting. It's, it's I was so just gonna exhausting. say it's exhausting. Uh huh. Yeah. Just if you have a nightmare, Satan's attacking you. Yeah. If yeah. you um, get a flat tire, 
well, Satan's attacking you. Also, did you tithe? Yeah. yeah. So it could be God attacking you. Yeah, yeah exactly. You didn't tithe. <sighs> um, our son got really sick in 2020 with a autoimmune disease and he's, he's, re he's recovered since then, like through treatment and stuff. But I had a friend and her husband was in inquiring. And I thought, this is really nice that you're asking how my son is doing. Cause they were very much of the word of faith, um, mm. you know, name it and claim it. And you got to speak healing and have the authority. And one day I was over and he asked me how my son was doing. And I said, actually, we just got his last um, blood results back and he's not doing well at all. Basically what his body was doing was attacking his red blood cells. And yeah. Um, yeah. And so he was just not doing good at all. And so we were hoping for an improvement on, on this test, but he just wasn't showing any signs of improvement. So um, I told him, yeah, we're just not really getting better and, and it's it's really upsetting and stuff. And he turned it around on me and said, well, you know, as his mother, you have the authority over him and you need to start speaking to his body and telling his body to be healed in Jesus name and come into line with the word. Yeah, of to God. come into line with the word of God. So somehow he spun it and put this on me like the this was on my Stacey. fault that I was trusting the doctors and what they had to say. And I was like, oh, I was just so mad oh. because this was an actual life-threatening disease that my son was battling. And meanwhile, he's on this medication that's changing his appearance. And we're dealing with all the side effects from the drug. And at home, it, it was a scary thing. It was thing. really scary. So and he found a way to put all the blame on Stacy because she was the mother and had the authority to just tell the stupid thing to leave his body. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, of course. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, those people are insane. They're just, oh. in, it's, it's, it's insanity because if that was true, why aren't they just going to hospitals and healing people? Why are there, why are there hospitals? Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's just, there's so many things that I can look at now and just, it, find the fallacies in um yeah. so many and i definitely do <laughs> yeah um yeah it's you, you do yeah. a great job of it yeah. <laughs> and you. we're back to the humor yeah i love so your instagram you mentioned <laughs> um, james you. dobson like we're obviously familiar with james dobson oh. and focus on the family focus but on the family a lot oh of people who, there's a lot of people who watch our show um they might not be familiar with his teaching so could you just give a little just a little back story on yeah. what that <laughs> is about our, our home was filled with his books oh yeah my my sister was the middle child and she was the, the strong-willed strong child I yeah. was the eldest I was the people pleaser so you were the compliant I, child yes I was, I was yeah the compliant as well mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah um which is not without its Oh no. Immense oh. trauma. Oh, it was. Absolutely. Because the yeah. compliant child always felt guilty. Yep. Because they had to watch the strong willed child. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yep. The strong willed um, child in my family got rewarded because instead of being left with the babysitter, she got taken on the trips because no one would look after her. <laughs> and <laughs> the strong willed child did not get the physical abuse that I got because I wouldn't speak up and tell people I was being abused. So, yeah, yeah, it's, um, yeah. all right. So James, Dr. James Dobson, he got his, um, PhD. I believe it's a PhD. I don't think that, I, I don't know. I don't think a lot a of them are, are doctorates from yeah. their own yeah. alma mater or whatever. Yeah. They yeah. School. <laughs> um, he got his doctorate a long, I know a long time ago from a Southern California University. He okay. did a lot of work with Paul Popino, which is a known eugenist. Um, and mm -hmm. like that was his mentor. Um, the person who knows a whole lot about Dobson is, I believe it's D.L. Maywood. Um, they're on Instagram. They're okay. doing a whole book on Dobson. Oh. Um, but Dobson founded Focus on the Family. Mm -hmm. And um, he to focus on the family is located in 
Colorado Springs, and now yep. he's with Family Talk. So Focus on the Family got sick of his shenanigans a number of years back and kicked him out. And so he developed Family Talk, which is, I mean, I, it's awful. It's horrific stuff. Mm. Um, but his first book was The Strong-Willed Child. Yeah. Or sorry, Dare to Discipline. Dare his to discipline. Middle, his middle was something else. I can't remember, but his third was the strong willed child. And that really was just a continuation of dare to discipline. That was like his double down, Mm -hmm. um, dare to discipline. He equates, um, he tells this, he tells this silly anecdote, um, about it's not silly at all. It's horrific. Um, about his dog and how his dog wouldn't, um, by the way, trigger warning for people, animal abuse. Um, he tells this story about how his dog, Siggy, named after Sigmund Freud, um, who is uh, also horrible, um, <laughs> yeah. and his dog was uh, reacting. His dog was jumping on him, and he didn't like that, and so he started beating his dog. And mm. he realized after several beatings that the dog was afraid of him, cowered, and was subdued. And then he thought, it's interesting because like my kid does the same thing. And so he started beating his kid and his child was then compliant. So then he said, children are like dogs. They need to be trained. And this is how you train them. So he encouraged moms to carry wooden spoons in their purses so they could beat their children. And then told parents that there's this part on the back of your kid's neck where if you pinch it really hard, it'll cause them almost to fall down to the ground because it's so painful. And get this, he literally said this, you can do this in line at the grocery store to other people's children because oh if, if they're not compliant. Now, it oh. was during the 70s. So I don't know. What did parents just, I, I can't imagine 70s and 80s, just other like parents. Did spank yeah, they did. Kids. I remember a neighbor spanking my brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That it's, was in the I, 90s. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. sure that, I'm sure it happened to me too. I just, um, um, I probably, it's probably deep down there somewhere, but, um, I, anyway, so that, that gave permission. He gave permission to an entire generation yeah. to beat their children. Also, he taught an entire generation of parents how to hate their children and call it love. Mm. And I mm-hmm. was talking with somebody the other day and really just like verbal, allowing myself to like really verbally process some things that I know had been kind of stirring in the backup stirring. Here's another word. Um, it should be like a swear jar. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> evangelical yes, term yes. jar. Um, and I recognize that James Dobson taught an entire generation how to dehumanize their children. And yet we sit back and we wonder how is it that this whole group of boomers and older Gen Xers are um, are able to just take the humanity away from people and be so horrible to immigrants and people mm-hmm. of color and all and um, the mm-hmm. queer and trans community? Mm-hmm. Well, because they grew up or they 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 raised their children in a space where they dehumanize them. Like if you can dehumanize your child, yeah. you can dehumanize anybody. anybody. Mm -hmm. And that's what James Dobson taught, along with the Pearls and the Ezzos. Um, So Gary Ezzo, um, the Pearls, uh, their first names are escaping me. Um, And then, obviously, um, Bill Gothard of the IBLP. Mm -hmm. But they were Mm -hmm. all, they were all in on it together. And they just, they dehumanize kids. They're not real. Or... Mm -hmm this idea that we come out of the womb already adults. And that was the, another idea Mm -hmm. that they had presented that no, they are, they're already adult. They just like, they're just disobedient adults. You know, they, they can, they can have a ton of responsibility on their shoulders. They know how to act and sit still like the whole concept of blanket training. I was just going to say the blanket training from uh, the Duggars. Yeah. So I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think that my mom did that in any, any way, shape or form. Um, there are things that I was spared from 
I didn't get a metal fly swatter. I certainly got the wooden wooden spoon, but I didn't get a belt or a metal fly swatter, swatter or a switch or anything like that. Like that's that was not something that my parents did. See, it's interesting because they thought that the spoon was okay. That's not abuse, but a belt, a belt was abuse. So hmm. it was it was in whatever um you know, um to each I suppose in Generation. that yeah. Yeah. Um so I, um, yeah, it, it was just, it was always very interesting. Um, but that's Dobson. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's Dobson for you. Um, oh gosh. Um, he did, I, uh, he is a main, he's one of the main pushers of conversion therapy in the evangelical movement. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not the founder of conversion therapy, but he no. is, um, one of the, he did love one out. He was part of the Exodus movement. Um, in addition to that, he did true love weights, purity rings, mm-hmm. uh, chastity balls. Like I had a purity ring. I oh signed God. a covenant. Um, I signed several. Yeah. You know, it's just any time it was presented, I'm like, nah, I'm going to sign this one. Um, yeah. <laughs> I carried, I carried a card. It was in my wallet and I, I don't, I don't know when I took it out, but it's, it's actually really funny that I, I mean, what was I going to do? Like, oh, if, no. the pres- if an opportunity presented itself to make out with a, with somebody, what was I going to do? Pull it out and be like, hmm, guess what? My card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm promised to Jesus and my future husband. Um, oh my God. So it's, oh. it's just, uh, uh, Ad- adventures and odyssey is another thing that he did. And that's just uh-huh. like a, I love donations. Right? <laughs> right? Wits we Corner. The, yeah. Yeah. We got the yeah. American, the one from Washington State. We listened to your Christian station in um, Praise, Praise, Praise 1065. Praise yep. 1, oh, <laughs> you got 1065. See, I did yeah. do it with yeah. 1053. Yeah, um, I, I remember when we started to be able to get 1065 down here because the signal was better. And I'm like, oh, yeah. it's this is a better one. But um, you guys. <laughs> You guys had Paws and Tails, though. Oh, I don't, I don't remember that one. That. Paws and Tails was a Canadian Christian, oh. very similar to. So, imagine Adventures in Odyssey okay. if it were animals. Oh, oh great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's what our kids were listening to because we had, um, we were friends with some pretty fundy people, but the mom was from Nova Scotia. Okay. And so she's like, oh, Paws and Tails is the best. And that was played in, um, it was a, like a, you know, like a TBN type okay. um, cartoon, but you could also listen to it on CD, audio, that sort of thing. So we were all about Veggie Tales. Oh, like yeah. Veggie Phil tales. Vischer. And he, I mean, that's the cool thing is Veggie Tales. I feel like Veggie Tales still people like I don't have any issue with it yeah, they whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, they did. They exactly they would you say they got peeled? Got cool. They got peeled. Yeah. I don't know. Like yeah, what yeah, would you yeah. say? Yeah. Um yeah. yeah, Phil Vischer is super progressive. Yeah, yeah. super progressive. Yeah. And honestly, I mean my kids still have very fond memories of Veggie Tales. I have yeah. fond I have memories no of trauma from Veggie Tales. No. Zero. No. <laughs> In fact, I couldn't watch it because it was too progressive. Yeah, I could see that. And was um, it religious enough at times. Yep, it wasn't. It wasn't religious enough. And because they were showing it during the day on the weekend, it was like on ABC. No, NBC. They would sometimes show it on NBC, like, you know, in the middle of some like tennis or golfing event or something like that. It would be on. So it was just, it was too, if it was on one of those channels. Yep. Too secular. (laughs) Too secular. Oh my gosh. But my kids were a part of it. Yeah. They, they really enjoyed it. And they still remember this, you know, the Stuff Mart song. And I know. I remember all the (laughs) stuff. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I don't know. There's something really fun. Bungie, bungee, 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 bungee. Like it's just, okay. it's, yeah. They I call Amazon the what? stuff mart. They call Amazon oh. the stuff mart. Oh, that's oh my God. No, I still find myself singing. Where's my hairbrush? Where's that's my mine. hairbrush? <laughs> mm-hmm. All kinds of, yeah. of, of their songs get stuck in my head still. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's no trauma just, from that. No, zero. So, mm-hmm. um, 
I so I have a podcast called Focus on Your Own Family. And oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's um, oh. it started. I'm so I really just got my TikTok or my Instagram going about a year ago, but I've yeah. been on TikTok for um for longer and i did this video so when shiny happy people came out i was overjoyed that people were talking about it because it uncovered some things i know for myself that i didn't even realize that we had wisdom booklets in our house like i had no idea i thought that no it was character character qualities or something like that i mm -hmm. i thought we were really cool and had encyclopedia britannica in our yeah. home yeah. um and then I looked at it and then my best friend, my childhood best friend sent me a picture. She's like, oh my gosh, I had this. And I looked at it and I was like, this whole time I thought I was cool and had Encyclopedia Britannica. Do you remember how cool that was? Like if you had we even it. just one Encyclopedia Britannica, you were so cool. Yeah. And I found out it was, um, it was a, it was fundy stuff. Um, whatever. Wow. Anyway. Um, so I went on to TikTok and this was probably in June. I mean, I have a hat on. I'm getting ready to take my kid to lacrosse practice. And I just make a quick rant where I'm like, I love that we have shiny, happy people because we need to take people like Bill Gother down. But what about Dobson? And I hold up these two wooden spoons <laughs> and I just, I just, it's like a full rant. <laughs> I press upload and I go and I look at it like, 30 minutes later and it's over a hundred thousand. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. I and then it's just <laughs> comment after comment after comment of, Oh my gosh, you opened a, a memory for me. Or yeah, I had to deal with that. And because of that, I can't keep wooden spoons in my kitchen or we had one and it was named this. And it was like just oh, constant. Wow. And I was getting DMS. Um, I was getting emails. And then I just, I, one day, I mean, just a couple days later, I mean, cause it was like really sitting with me. And I was putting on my makeup and I was like, I'm going to do a podcast and I'm going to call it focus on your own family and people can just come on. And I don't care if they're, um, social media influencers or the checker at the grocery store. Like it doesn't matter to me mm -hmm. because in the evangelical movement, you had to have status to share mm -hmm. your story. That was that very so important. True. Yep. So I just said, that's it. I don't care. Like you can be anybody and come on this. And I ask three questions. Um, how did, when, you know, I say, when I say focus on the family adventures that, cause I do a pre-interview, I always uh -huh. pre-interview because I need to know what I'm getting into and, mm -hmm. um, what, cause I need to know how to frame that question. Like if somebody was, um, if somebody went through adventures and odyssey, like that was such a big part of their life. Then I ask like, Hey, how did it, you know, when I say adventures in Odyssey, so I kind of, so it's all leading. Mm -hmm. Um, and it naturally goes into, so I, when I say this, how did that impact your life or what was the influence on your life? And then I'll say, um, but it naturally goes into it anyway. How, how did James Dobson focus on the family? How did that impact? How does it impact your life today? And then my my final question is, what are you doing to end the cycle of trauma in your life or in your community or in the world, that sort of thing, depending on who they are? So if they're a social media influencer or a, pol or a political figure, then I say your community or the world. Um, but it's uh, it's been I'm on my second season and it's been um, just a really good experience because yeah. um, I, there are certainly moments where I have like in real time memory flashbacks because of mm -hmm. something somebody else says. And mm -hmm. we all went through this together. And I explained this to a friend the other day. And I said, our trauma, especially women, when we get together and I'm, and when I say women, I, I'm also, I've, I apologize. I'm including trans women. I'm including yeah, non-binary, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, when we get together and we share our trauma, it's like we're putting together this quilt. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we can look back and we can see how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. And we can see that we use, we're healing together and creating something so beautiful. But I need Stacy. I need D. Mm -hmm to help me heal 
because I need to hear your stories. They're just right. as imp- your stories are just as important to my healing as my own story is important to my healing. Um, wow. so that's, that's I why I that. created it. Um, wow. and I honestly just, I, I thought, okay, like one person's going to listen. <laughs> um, and it's, 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 a bit more than one, um, <laughs> but it, it's been, it's been quite a journey and I'm deeply honored and deeply humbled by every single person that has the courage and, um, the audacity to come on right. and heal out loud. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it's a survivor podcast, but I always ended yeah. on a good note because I don't, want people to be depressed. And yeah. when I get emails like, oh, I binged your podcast. Are you okay though? Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> that's that's tough. Like I have several conversion therapy survivors oh, that tell wow. their story. Wow. I have the strong willed child consistently yeah. on my podcast. Mm-hmm. I have people that have uh, like gone through um because of purity culture went through sexual assaults, went through mm-hmm. like I it's real. It's raw. Um, that's why I have it under true crime. <laughs> ah, oh, wow. Are you it's, it's listed under true crime. I do not have it listed under religious podcasts. It's listed under true crime because people need to know my whole purpose of this podcast is yes, to heal loudly together, but also hold that man accountable because mm. he had, he has blood on his hands. He yeah, has people yeah. from the the queer and trans community that have killed themselves because he has shown them through his true love or through his um, love one out and Exodus yeah. movement that they are not worthy oh. to be called righteous by God. Mm-hmm. And when we are born into a system that says, if we cannot be called righteous, if we cannot be called pure, we are scum. We are nothing. We are not mm-hmm. yeah. worth life. So yeah. Yeah. Um, that is a crime. He's under true wow. crime. And yeah, and one you. of these days he's going to be, um, do you know that I didn't know he was still alive? I thought he died. Oh, he is. Um, did you see my video recently where I said, I played yes. a clip of him and I was I like, I just saw it before we, <laughs> I hope just before we, um, came yeah. on, came on. Like, I, yeah. I, I hope that your hospice nurse is a strong willed child. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, the one. one we were just yeah. watching right before. I was like, I thought he died. Yeah. No, yeah. he is very much a lot. He's 90. Um, I think, I think he's in his, he's either 90 or in his nineties or something, but, yeah. um, I, he's just, um, he's a, he's a garbage human. And yeah. I don't, I actually yeah. don't say that about many people. I, no. I, I truly believe that people are redeemable. Mm-hmm. Um, there are just some people that aren't, and he's in that yeah. category and yeah. I don't, yeah. Um, everything I say about him is truth. In fact, there's a lot of research that goes into every single guest that I have on. And that's why Mm -hmm. I do pre-interviews like, Mm -hmm. cause if they're going to, if they're going to say something, I need to make sure I can back that up with Mm -hmm. the research and the truth. So, Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, so Hmm. it's, uh, it's heavy. Yeah, it's heavy, but it's, I'm happy that I can hold somebody accountable. I can hold him accountable. Um, I think in many cases, parents were just trying to do the right thing. I also think in some cases that parents were already abusive people and used Dobson as an excuse to abuse their children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I Um, spanked my kids with mm -hmm. wooden spoon (laughs) Mm -hmm. and it was, I hated it. And Stacey will tell you, I used to say to them, I hate this. I don't like doing this. And I would be more upset than even they were. And how old were you when I stopped? I sat you down and said, I'm not doing this. And and Lance was seven. Yeah. And I said, I'm not doing this anymore because who you are as people right now is who you're going to be forever. And spanking you isn't going to make you any different. So I'm not doing this anymore. And then for like the next 10 years, I would have nightmares that I broke my promise and spanked them. Mm-hmm. That's how important it was to me to not spank them anymore. And There's just I on. literally because I was beaten as a child with belts and I would be told to go out and get my cut my own switch and if it wasn't big enough then I'd get in trouble for not getting a big enough one. But I was taught the Dobson method that if you don't spank them Mm -hmm. you're not a good parent and not to use your hand because that was not loving. 
that's for loving. I mean, the kid's not stupid. Your hand's the one holding the object. Exactly. But Stacy, at one point as an adult, she said, I totally, I didn't get it when you were, when I was a kid, when you'd say, this hurts me more than it hurts you. She'd say, I would think, then why are you doing it? (laughs) She actually didn't get very many spankings. She was just a really, really compliant child. Her brother, on the other hand, oh my God. It's like, but then I just got, I literally got to the point where I just couldn't do it. But I, James Dobson was a very influential person. Yeah. So, and it, like everything, I listened to focus on the family. Um, the, I always wanted my kids to go to the camp, but I could never yeah. afford it, the summer camp, but I could never mm-hmm. afford it. Thank goodness. But yeah, the, my mom had the books. My mom raised us with the, but I was very compliant. The only time I ever got, my mom never had to beat me. It was my stepdad who I got most of. My mom no did one beat had me a to few beat times. You. No, <laughs> but my stepdad did, but yeah. it wasn't for anything that I did or didn't do. Um, but I watched my sister. Like I watched my mom pin my sister down and shove dirty socks in her mouth because she wouldn't stop screaming. Like I watched horrible things, but um, yeah, I just came to a point within myself as a person, like, I don't want to spank my kids. I don't care what the church says. I just, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I just stopped. I just stopped one day. I just said, I'm not doing this anymore. I don't care. And I literally said to myself, no matter what I do, who they are is who they are. Spanking is not going to make a difference. Because I think what I heard was, I heard something that wasn't church related. And they said a child's personality is developed by the time they're three. It's just up to you to teach them manners and social cues and that kind of thing. But who they are by age three is who they are. And I was like, great. Okay. So what am I doing then? And that's when I just made that decision. I'm not doing this anymore because it literally was harder on me just because of the person that I was. And I just didn't want to do it anymore. I just didn't. I just made the decision. It, it makes me sick to spank my kids and I didn't want to do it. So yeah. Then proceeded to have nightmares all the time that I broke my promise, but I never did. No. Yeah. It just, it, it removes trust from the relationship and, um, the concept of breaking a child's will is the dumbest thing. Mm -hmm. Um, They're going to need that will to stand up to people, Mm -hmm. especially, especially when they're born female. Um, Yeah. yeah. They're going to need that. And how many times would I wake you up in the middle of the night and apologize? Oh yeah. Many times. Like, well, not many because it didn't happen a lot. No, but but even if they, if they went to sleep and I was upset with them, not even from, not even Spain, if, if they went to sleep and, I had been angry with them. I'd wake them up in the middle of the night and tell them, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. couldn't even stand that. Like I, cause I'd had such an awful childhood. So I just didn't want them to have the same feelings that I had as a yeah. child. I just went out of my way to try to do everything that I didn't have done for me. So yeah, yeah I tried to do everything reverse of what happened to me. So yeah, I, um, I was, I mean, obviously I was certainly spanked as a child. Um, and I'm thankful that there's a lot of just common sense that started to, um, come to me as I began parenting. Now I was very young. I was 20, I think it was barely 23 when, um, when I became a parent, um, and that without any help, without any support, um, that was really tough. Mm-hmm. And, um, but throughout time, I mean, now, now I love the relationship that I have with my older kids. Sorry, I've tickled my throat with my older kids. They're, they're so fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I have two boys and a girl and they're, they're so fun. Like we have a lot of fun together. Um, and they're all strong-willed children. Mm. They all make me want to pull out my hair sometimes. Um, (laughs) and, and I love that. I love that because that means 
that they're going to do that to other people <laughs> when they need. My, my kids are innovative and they will always find a way to make something work mm -hmm. if it's meant to work, right? Like mm -hmm. they're not bullies. They're not mm -hmm. going to just, they're not going to take no for an answer in the wrong situation. Right. Um, but they're learning how to stand on their own two feet and they're learning mm -hmm. that at home. Mm -hmm. They're learning how to look us in the eye and be like, I don't like that. And yeah. we have a discussion, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than I don't like that. Okay, go to your room. I don't like you or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're learning how to yeah. use social media responsibly. They're learning how to use their phones responsibly. They're learning how to have conversations with adults responsibly. Um, how old are your kids? I don't say ages. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the most I'll give is I have two boys and a girl. Um, okay. They're teenagers. So okay. I can say well, that. My youngest yeah. is not a teenager. Okay. Um, my youngest loves Taylor Swift. Like <laughs> Taylor Swift is her world right now. Oh, right. That's so, so cute. Yeah. My youngest is definitely our strong-willed child. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he's a lot he's of fun. He's like three people in one. He's, he's just he's fun. He's only not even in kindergarten and he's already reading self-taught. Yep. Yep. That's how yeah. my daughter was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, she is really just an old soul. Um, when she was young, okay. So she was maybe 15 months. Um, I looked at her and I said, I, I said her name, um, and her middle name. So it's like a nickname. And she goes, no, no, mommy, I know. And then she said the name, um, I ladybird, you call me ladybird. Ah! And so she's been ladybird ever since. Aww. Um, so she's ladybird or bird or birdie. Um, but yeah. Um, and that was before the movie that was before all that. Um, and it's just interesting. I'm like, well, ladybird Johnson, like, I love that. <laughs> she's going to be a strong, strong person. <laughs> um, and Aww. she's, she'll be the one to say like, Oh, you have to use the correct pronouns, you know, like she'll, yeah. she's that yeah. one. Um, yeah, she's she's just she, she also loves puns. Um the other day she said, um, mom, what is a Hershey bar's pronouns? And I was like, Whoa, where's this going? Like her and she. Her. Her and she. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's like her and she. <laughs> um and then oh, her other one was um she asked for a hair tie. And I said, um, I said, oh, is your hair being um, s something, something like, is your hair, do you, is your hair being like loud in your face or something? And she goes, yeah, my hair has volume. Yeah. <laughs> so Very she's good. just, it's little things, but she, you know, she's not even a teenager. She's just good with yeah. words and yeah. we're discovering that she's gifted um, as in like highly capable. Um, so she's, she's a good girl. Um Aww very strong willed, very, very strong willed. Um, she's going to be a, um, a CEO or a president. There's just no, there's yeah. no way she will there's do anything. Other than, no, no, she will absolutely yeah. be that. Like I, yeah, she will not. I, I don't see a man controlling that, <laughs> that person at all ever. <laughs> Good. So anybody controlling her, no one's going to control no. her. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, she's, yeah. she's a beautiful, beautiful person. Good. And, um, we have a lacrosse player. My middle is into lacrosse and then my, um, eldest, uh, which you guys, you're from Canada. So you mm -hmm. know all Hockey. about lacrosse. Yeah. Oh. Um, so we, yeah. we like cringe when we have to play a Canadian team cause he plays select <laughs> lacrosse and we, so he also does box, box lacrosse. And when we look on the roster and we're like, oh my gosh, there's a Canadian team. Like we are never <laughs> going to win because they do this for fun when it's not hockey. Yeah. Um, hockey time. So, um, yeah, their, uh, lacrosse has become so fun. And then my eldest is a distance runner and, oh, wow. um, he does cross country and track. So, it's fun. I, I truly feel like, wow, we are living in the greatest time, um, in Good. these kids' lives. Like it's fun. You know, is it chaotic? Yeah. Like my daughter does dance and we have to get the other kid to lacrosse and then the other kid with his activities. But I get to watch my kids discover 
what they're passionate about. And they get to tell me, I don't want to do that. I'd like to try this. I didn't get that option. I didn't get to do sports. Yeah. That wasn't something that was a, I mean, I was, I had youth group. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to do anything. I did do, I did figure skating, um, a little bit here and there, but that was kind of it. I didn't get to do a lot of the things because Mm -hmm. it came, um, it, it was a schedule conflict with church. Yeah, I'm just going to say if it kept you at a church on Sunday, it was a sin. Yeah. 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 So, um, to be able to watch my kids develop their, their loves and likes and dislikes and all of that, it's, it's really a joy. And I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm thankful that they don't have to deal with church anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, they're old enough to have a memory. Um, thankfully my daughter's memory is like, it was great because it was preschool church kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but my oldest two, um, my middle is the one that really said it well. And he said, I didn't like church because you and dad turned into different people when you were at church than when you were at home. Um, like he saw how fake we had to be (laughs) to be at church. Oh yeah. 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 And, um, he hated it. So I hated it. Yeah. So I'm, we all hated it. Yeah. If we we're really honest. Did. Let's be real. If we're honest. <laughs> sucked. <on>. Yeah. <laughs> sucked. And I, I had to laugh, right? Because if this is sinning, like if we are living our sinful lives, I, I'm sorry, but they marketed it very yeah. like this is this is false marketing. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I um, agree. I don't like I, this is the most mundane yeah. <laughs> I have ever been. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. pretty much. Well, this has been really fun. Yeah, Thank you. Has. I love Thank this. You Getting so to know much. you outside know. of these little ninety minute, ninety second little clips. clips. Oh, it's been great. Yeah, Thank you, for you taking the time. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah. I've I've had oh gosh, I've had different emails throughout the last several months, and I've said, yeah, I'll totally be on the podcast, but. I, I don't, I need an assistant. Um, but here, here's the, but here's the qualifications for the assistant. Um, one, uh, it needs to be for free. Uh, yeah. that's a must. Also, <laughs> they need to understand that I don't like relinquishing control. So they're really just <laughs> an AI. Idea. Need AI. Yeah. They're just they're an idea. idea. They're like, yeah. they're for me to say, I'll have my assistant do that. Yeah, but I'm really doing that. Yeah, <laughs> with my assistant's email signature. There you yeah. go. Perfect. Because I have to have creative control. Um, there you go. And editing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so I'll never have an assistant. So that's that's great. And yeah. also, I will only be on one out of every ten podcasts that asks uh, me. <laughs> so, well, thank you. We're honored. I want to be on them all. And now, uh-huh. now I'm like going back with my tail between my legs to uh-huh. all of them. And I'm like, You're Hey, so I'm so sorry. It took me three months to get back to you. Yeah, let's do this. Well, you were quick. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, so where can people find your podcast? Yeah, it's on true crime. It's on. Yes. Yeah, it's on every pod wherever you can get your podcast. So okay. it's called focus on your own family podcast. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm on TikTok, the yeah. um, the underscore exvangelical underscore zenial. Same with threads and Instagram. I'm not on Twitter um, because I just don't have time for another thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm, yes, I have a YouTube channel, but I, I mean, when I say I really don't post, I, I can't figure it out to save my life. That's just <laughs> another thing that, that I need an assistant for. See, <laughs> who won't do anything, who won't do anything, <laughs> who won't do a thing, but I will write the greatest recommendation. Like if they want to do this, I'll be like, they were the best assistant, literally the Ever. best assistant that I've ever, <laughs> ever, ever had. Not had. Um, yeah, yeah exactly. They, they did absolutely nothing so well yeah. um and they just they they just stood there and uh, looked great so awesome. yeah oh my god so we if anybody wants again. to be my assistant just yeah. saying. don't apply just here, here. Apply. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> all right she's gonna do our outro well, right no, we're gonna just thank our patrons oh so. right oh here we go yes you say them uh no nonsense aficionado patrick <laughs> hasenfratz trent oliphant s martin 
Tick and Jason Freer and, and Patty, Patty McDonald. McDonald. So thank Yay, you. Thank yes. you. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe and to ring our the bell. Channel, ring our bell. And if you do want to support us on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash the Stacey's Mom podcast. And we got to start promoting our leap year day, February 29th. This our is special gonna come birthday out in March. This is going to be past. Oh, it's past. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. This is going to be out in March. So thanks for, thanks for joining our us on birthday. our birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ooh, what yeah. day in March? Maybe it'll be on my birthday, March 4th. Oh, my birthday is March 10th. <gasps> it's going to be well, my 60th. Yeah. So. No. Happy yeah. birthday. It'll be my 40th. <laughs> oh, Stacey's 40 on the 20th. 40 on the 21st. <gasps> no way. Yeah. February. Okay. Uh, February. Yeah. So Look at we us. We will have had big birthday celebration yeah. by the time yeah. this has yeah. posted. Yeah, back then. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Are you ready? Are you ready to be 40? Like, I, I, uh, I, I'm I, like, bring it on. But then I'm like, wait, I was back. always told that 40 was when you were old. I know. And I'm like, right, like ir guys. irrelevant. Right, you know you what guys. I mean? <laughs> I'm ready, but I'm nervous. But I'm excited. I know. Like all the things. <laughs> I know. I, I hear like all the really good ideas start in your 40s. Yeah. Okay, so, guys. I have a 40-year-old child. Okay. Yeah. My mom's probably saying that too. Yeah. Um yeah. so I I so there's here we that. go. Uh, Look, we are celebrating the 11th anniversary of our 29th birthday. And there we oh, go. There it I is. said that when I was 40. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Happy <laughs> anniversary. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right, Thank you so go. much for being here. Oh, and... you are welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. We'll Bye, see you everybody. Next week. Bye. Oh, there's that.